What's going on, you guys? Mr. Money1235 back here yet again. Today's finally the day! I've waited so long to make this video. Almost like an entire year. The 20th anniversary edition of the debut album. A huge box set vinyl containing the first album, G Sides, Lake It Come Home, a live show that has only been in bootleg form forever. And exclusive five demo tracks that we've never heard before. I think it's pretty cool. This thing is heavy. You can feel the you can feel the heftiness of the package for sure. Um, let's take this shit out of the shrink wrap. Man, I have been pumped for this thing. It actually shipped from the U.S. Gorilla Store on time. Kinda. It came out on Friday. It just got here on a Tuesday. Saw some other people on the Gorillas Reddit got theirs already. I've been very jealous. I've been trying to not look at the pictures of things inside. I've been trying to leave myself spoiler free. Just like I've been trying to leave myself spoiler free for the new Spider-Man movie, which I'm going to see Thursday night. But we're not going to talk about that right now. We're going to talk about Gorillas. Because we never do that on this channel. We never talk about Gorillas on this channel. So it's about time we did that. There it is, boys. Folds out like that. Oh yeah. That's so cool. Exhibit A. It doesn't come out very far. The vinyl. It's in there. I haven't even really got to look at this good myself yet. So I'm just like, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool to see Leica on a new vinyl oh live at the forum 2001 it's upside down but that's what that says pretty cool side b side c side d and demos it says demos and that's it it looks like that's pretty cool let's take a look at some of the Top secret case files in here. <laughs> oh man, does anyone really understand what the uh, what the DMC stuff is? Is it something to do with like uh, policing music that's too different or doesn't conform to the to the status quo? Is that the joke of this DMC thing that's going on right now? I still ha I still don't completely get what's going on there. I'm hoping we find out a little bit more or somebody wants to fill me in. The two little snapshots included. It's pretty cool. Damon and Jamie right there. Reminds me of the, uh, oh, it actually has their names on the back cover there. 2001. It's kind of cute, the little tiny uh, paper clip that they have that those two were on. I'm definitely going to be reading through most of this stuff just to try to understand what the, the case file stuff is supposed to mean or what exactly is going on here. If anybody can fill me in on that in a clearer way in the comments, please do. I would like it to be a little bit more explained to me instead of just kind of, you know, just going along with it. But I'm mostly here for the music and the artwork. Of course, you know me. I'm not too much of a lore guy. That's pretty cool. I haven't seen some of these noodle sketches before. That looks pretty awesome. Item number one. That's pretty neat. Whoops. Keep looking through a few of the more pictures. I've seen this before. Oh, that's a... I think I've seen the finished sketch of what this turned out to be. That's pretty cool, though. I haven't seen some of these other ones before it's really really neat now save your soul ghost train that's really cool oh yeah i recognize these from the bananas documentary it's also the theme of this also reminds me of the charts of darkness that documentary thing that they did for the uh, celebrity takedown dvd it's pretty cool Oh, wow, that's like a, the G-Side sketch 
these are really neat i i haven't seen a whole lot of things like this before with them so that's this is really cool man there's a ton of these in here like the gorilla there and the kong studios and stuff this is really neat i haven't seen a lot of these before looks like some more g sides artwork i've seen some of these in finished form was uh from our toys have arrived it looks like the sketch for that g bite the models for how the the characters were gonna look for that's the jump the gut g bite it's like the back cover for uh g sides almost Somebody made a note that his chin is wrong. Maybe it's not pointed enough. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's like the back of Demon Days. The back cover of Demon Days. Interesting. It's like they're individual parts or sketches of the individual limbs or something. I don't know. Robot noodles room. This is so cool. This is so cool. I mean, like, it just keeps on going with these. There's a ton of them. Early 2D rough sketches, it looks like. This looked like when they did that, uh... It's like when they did that magazine in the, uh... Charts of Darkness documentary. the poses some of russell's it looks like uh, some sketch of russell's room from the old kong studios website from back then some more russell stuff that's more murdoch stuff that note add bass guitar He's like jumping with nothing. Looks like some more sketches for the website too, a little bit. That's really cool. Y'all know what that's from. Oh my God, it's the 5-4 storyboards. Everybody saw the animatic, but, you know, the, the music video was never finished. It looks like it's the storyboards for 5-4. That's really, really cool. Holy crap. This thing never ends. I'm trying to get all the words in there so you can pause and read it if you want to. Oh, wow, this is crazy. God, this brings back some memories. Ah, y'all have especially got to see this picture. The computer can't go out on me now. Look at that. Oh man, does that bring back some memories looking at the map of Kong Studios on the website? That is crazy. Oh well, concept design art for the Space Monkeys. It looks like Lake of Come Home artwork. Yeah, I recognize a few of those. Oh, dude, the Clint Eastwood storyboards. How neat is that? And it looks like that's it. That's the end of the case file. All in all, some really cool things that I've never seen before. I really, really like that a whole lot. I'm going to take a look at a few of the uh, vinyl make sure these get back in order i especially got to leave out the the part with all the written stuff on it because i gotta read that man they just they just pack you full of the of the sketches in this in this thing here man it's uh pretty lengthy 
had to close the case files. And yes, during this video, I will talk a little bit more about uh, what I thought of the unheard demos, because I did hear them before this actually got to my house. So uh, I will go into more detail about those. I'm going to check out some of the vinyl, see what that looks like. My guess is it's going to look exactly like the standard editions, except it's way cleaner. Yeah, I mean, you can tell it's never been played. It's mint. I think the label looks perfect. The vinyl itself looks really good, too. It doesn't look like a bit of dust is on that thing. I love it. It's sexy. I almost don't want to play this version, but... I don't buy my records to collect like that. I buy them to play. I do. I buy them to play and uh, no one can no one can stop me. So got them. I guess I could still technically play my other versions, but uh, the G sides collection is slightly different. The track listing once again, it looks exactly like the vinyl and I have videos on those. And take a look at some of the vinyl that we haven't been able to see before though. Live at the forum 2001. I'll go over the track listing as well for these. You know, it just looks kind of like somebody wrote it with a Sharpie almost. It's kind of a, you know, just a whatever. I think there's an exclusive sketch on the other side of the demo disc because um, there is no side B to the demo disc. So let's go take a look at that real quick. The C's the demo recordings. Demos. I like it comes in the black jackets inside the case. Oh yeah. That's cool. It's going to be hard to pick that up on the camera probably, but it's the back of 2D from the back of the, uh, from the back of the album, debut album cover. It's really, really hard to see, and I'm sorry about that, but I know you can catch it in some glimpse. I don't know, maybe they should have made that a different kind of color, but it's an etching, so you know. They do that a whole lot on the back of these vinyl that have nothing on the other side, so. Demos. That's pretty cool. Almost use that as an art piece if you didn't want to play the demos, but it's like one of the only things in this package that you haven't heard before, so. Of course you're gonna do that. You know what might be fun? I might actually play the demos disc and uh, talk about them as we go on. The foiling, the cool not approved stamps on the track listings here. The track listing is on Jeep sides. They're kind of interesting on this one. Soul Child Remix, Dracula, Rock the House Radio Edit, The Sounder, False, Clint Eastwood, Phil Life Cypher Version, Ghost Train, Hip Avatross, Left Hand Suzuki Method, 1, 2, D, 3. I think that's an amazing track list for G-Sides. It sounds really close. It sounds like the, uh, I think that might be actually the English, the UK track listing for G-Sides. Um, either way, it's a great track list. Uh, can't fault it for that. And uh, the track listing for the live show, which I can't wait to listen to, by the way. I've heard bits of that on YouTube, but it's never been released in like an official form before, so that's really, really cool. M1A1, Tomorrow Comes Today, Slow Country, 5-4, Starshine, Man Research, Soundcheck, Rehash, Clint Eastwood, Rock the House, Dracula, 19 through 2000, Punk, a reprise of 5-4, and a reprise of Clint Eastwood to end out the show. So, I'm pumped to listen to this show tonight on my record player. But uh, let's talk about the, uh, the demos. This first track that you can kind of hear in the background is called First Idea. And um, I don't take a whole lot from this. It reminds me a whole lot of like the type of things that we got on the Humans Super Deluxe. But the one thing that I do take away from this demo track, I guess, is that um, Damon was just trying to create something that just wasn't blur, I feel like, at the time. I like it when the other drums come in. But, uh, but yeah, it's... Um, that's really cool, actually. Um, I could just tell that Damon was trying to do something that wasn't blur, and I can respect him for that. Because, you know, at the time he had just released 13. I think that was the newest blur album at the time. So, um, 
I don't know, I guess you can say that some of this kind of resolves in... I guess some of this can kind of remind me a little bit about Blur's self-titled album as well. The, a little bit of experimental kind of sounds that they got going on here. I'm just trying to think about Damon's headspace at the time in 2001 when 1999 he had just released 13 with Blur. So it's really cool to listen to this kind of mindset for Damon, trying to create something new. I can tell that he had no idea what he was going to do at this period, at this point when creating Gorillaz, but I also get the sense that, um, you know, he was being adventurous with it. And that's what you want to do when you have a project like this. So that's kind of what I take away from this uh, first track and a few of the other ones that are going to come up from here. I believe the pronunciation of this next track is Shaga Laga and um, it gives me a little bit of like a uh, Middle Eastern feel when I hear the instrumentation in this one. I think it sounds really cool. I think it might be like a prerequisite to like rehash whenever I listen to the background vocals or the background like instrumentation it reminds me a little bit of what he eventually uses in the background on rehash. I have no idea. I can just tell that he's just trying to work out like a vocal melody here. I do think it's interesting and I do like the background instrumentation. This is my favorite part. It's like he uses the acoustic guitar for like some of the breaks in there to create almost like a bass line sounding thing on the acoustic guitar. He almost sounds a little drunk, I gotta say. Ooh! That distorted guitar coming in there. This track is simply called Genius. Look at the acoustic guitar. Melodica. Very rough. Sounds like it might have been recorded on like a cassette tape machine or something. It's got a pretty good beat. It's honestly kind of putting me in a daze a little bit. It's kind of hypnotic. It's kind of hypnotic. This probably could have ended like a minute ago. It's a little repetitive near the end. The track's only for like four minutes, but it kind of overstays its welcome. I get it. it's a demo. I get it's a demo. <laughs> this is just hand clapper. Some more Damon vocals in this one as well. It sounds really cool. It reminds me of Faust on G sides. That's what it makes me think of. Oh no! That, oh lord! Sounds like what he does on Ghost Train. Ah! This next one's definitely my favorite, Acoustic 2. Damon on guitar and piano doing a demo of a Latin Simone, which is one of my favorite songs on the on the debut album anyway. Love this. It's so raw, so real. Damon doing the background vocals himself in that. It's really cool. That's cool. Love the rawness of that. Well, that was the demos. Pretty cool stuff. Um, I actually kind of like these a lot more than some of the demos that we got from the Humans Super Deluxe, um, even though they're really raw. I wish we had more of them. I think it's a disappointment that there's only five on it. But uh, still, kind of cool for what we got. 
so anyway that's uh that's my little review and look and unboxing and listening to some of the demos off of the uh 20th anniversary edition of the gorillas debut album it's a really cool package i'm gonna try to listen to the live show tonight and uh if y'all are interested i'll give my thoughts on that so um let me know mr money one two three five i'll see you guys later